I know I talked about plastic, but hey, how about my old friend the flashing? <laughs> you know? It's nice and thin. It'll be stiff enough. Why the hell not? So, the way to handle this is use this to mark out my ID hole. Get me a scribe. The scribe. I know I just said I was going to use this to mark this hole, but that I just realized I really don't want this. I want some clearance between the hole that I'm going to have here and the rotating shaft that goes through, uh, the rotating part that goes through here, this part here. Because if I don't have any clearance, what's going to happen is this is going to have a tendency to rub on this and grab this disc and make that disc want to spin inside there and that's going to make a, uh, a noise I'm not going to like. But the whole purpose of this thing is to cover this here. So I've got to make it just slightly larger than just slightly larger than the, than the, the hole. So what if I if I use the compass and set let's see so I'll just uh, just go a little bit larger than what this is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eyeball this and go with a nice round number let's go with 43 millimeters since I've got this on millimeters okay 43 millimeters so I gotta uh, yeah I gotta find me some your compass with uh, or dividers with points on it all right these have some nice sharp points on them and uh, He's I can uh, he's a craftsman. Anyways, um, so what did I say? 43 millimeters. So half of that is 21 and a half millimeters. So set this to 21 and a half millimeters. How funny is that? This is almost <laughs> it's almost what these are set at now. Not quite. Really, kind of eyeballing this can be a little tricky. My old eyes. But again, the whole the whole idea is that I don't need to be dead on with this thing. This is just, you know what I mean. Know what I mean, Vern? All right. So now, let's see. Looks like this is the one that's the stationary one. Yeah, I'm not supposed to squeeze these when I'm doing this. Dummy. Alright. Now, could cut that circle out right now, but that would be foolish because I've got a dot right in the middle there where I just had this, these points, right? So, what I should do is reset that OD, okay. So what I want for an OD is I want it to fit down inside here, not too tight so it's easy to get in, but not too loose so that it can't shift around in this bore and uh, allow that inner hole to uh, to rub the shaft. So. Uh, so the dimension we want for that would be just a hair under one of these. Let's go with that one. One of these does seem like it's a tiny bit larger than the other, so... This one seems like it's the looser of the two. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna pick a number... Let me zero this again, just for giggles. That is zero. That's good. Alright, I'm gonna pick a number... 
Ideally, I'm going to pick a number divisible by 2. 77.7, whatever, we'll call it 78. Half of 78 is uh, 39. So now I'm going to go down to 39. 39. And you know what I just realized? I should have should have marked out two of these at the same time before I reset for the uh, OD. I should have uh, scratched the inner circle on the on another piece of this flashing. All right, we'll call that. Uh, we'll call that about right. I don't know if you can see that showing up or not, but there's my there's my uh, there's my two dimensions. It's two dimensional, man. So now I'm going to. Uh, What I'm probably going to do, I'm probably going to wish that I had used just a really good pair of scissors on these. I'll get less of a burr. Dull my scissors, though. Yeah, this is alright. Certainly don't need a visit from the International Scissor Sharpening Guild. Angry group of individuals. Seeking out people who misuse scissors across the world. The ISSG as their as they're known in some countries. See? So far so good. Okay, now. Cut the inner circle. That's going to be the tricky one. This was the easy part. Hmm. Those of you who have seen the estate sale series where I bought a bunch of stuff may remember these devices here. I got several of them. Two of them were one inch. This is the one inch size. And I think I've determined now that these are leather punches for cutting holes in leather. They've got a sharp edge. I figured they were for, the idea was to strike the back of these to, uh, to cut holes in something thin. So one inch, obviously, what I want is I want one of these this size, the size of the hole I want to make, but I don't have that luxury. But what I figure I can do is maybe punch a hole on the edge where that line is so that I have a place to start my scissors. Didn't work. Made a very nice dimple. Didn't cut it. Okay. Okay, Johnny. See what it did? Made a nice little dimple. Okay, uh... I ended up um, using a sharp utility knife to score a little cut, sneak my little Fiskar scissors in there and nibble away. And that's why I got this raggedy, sorry looking hole. But the good news is it's the right size, it seems like it's going to work out fine size wise. And I'm thinking about it. This is going to go in a, this is going to be seen like this. So that looks horrible at first sight, but the reality is this is actually going to be down in here like this. So it's going to be real hard to see that mess. So it's going to be functional, not pretty. Okay? Okay. So 
Now I'm going to knock. See that one just kind of goes in loose. Starts out loose. This one. Yeah, it tightens up a little more. The yellow one. But I realized, you know, making my life easier. I've got paint on the inside of this surface that's not supposed to be painted. So, let me just take a few seconds to scrape that out. Alright, I got most of that paint out of there except for right in there tight because I couldn't get in there with the wire wheel attachment on the die grinder without running the risk of getting this all chewed up, which is, that kind of shows a little bit, I think. I'm not sure, actually. That might be kind of covered, too, just in case. So, anyways, uh, so back to the assembly here. We're going to put this in like that. And I'm going to drop this in. So this has to be pressed in. I prefer to use my Dayton hammer. Where's my brass? Misplaced my brass. I got, a, I got a bar of brass that I use for doing this. Uh, I'm really going to have to put this in the press. I think I am. Oh, there's the high spot. I'm hitting the wrong spot. Almost there. That looks good. Now I've got to take this inner ring that goes in there. This is actually is going to make installation of this, putting a reassembly of this a lot easier too because before there was enough room where if this ring was just slightly off in one direction, the ball bearings would fall right through that slot. That's how big that slot is on the bottom that this my little uh, metal disc is now covering. But we're about to see that I don't have enough ball bearings in there. I am what looks to be too short, two bearings short. But Ideally, this is going to go on here like this. Oh, actually, I don't need to make another disc for the top here. I got this ring. It's right. Good. I like that. So when I put this all together, I'll, uh, I'll be all right. Maybe. Well, I'm going to quit tonight because it's almost 10 o'clock. Got a long day tomorrow. Away this weekend, so I'm not going to be able to work on it then. I'm actually going to... I, I, I find myself... I'm, we're going away camping with the kids, and I should be relaxing and, you know, doing all that stuff. And I just find my mind continuously wandering back here to the basement because I'm getting more and more excited about this drill press the, the far, farther along it gets um, and other projects too but right now this is the one that is closest to completion and uh, it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be cool